Calling all units, calling all units. Donut Shot has a fresh dozen. Go ahead and take a 1040. Salute, sir. Cheers. Wow. Wow. Roger, Roger. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's a good coffee right there. Mm -hmm. Good coffee at the donut shop. That's right. So, welcome, sir. Thank you, brother. Um, if you guys don't know, you must be living under a rock. It is an honor. It is an, an honor, complete honor, for you to be on the show. My chief, Chief Colina. Wow. <laughs> welcome, welcome. That's big time. Yeah. And uh, let me introduce myself, if you don't know, Nick from Nick Off Duty. Justin from Florida. And you want to introduce yourself, sir? I am George Kalina, Chief of Police with the City of Miami. Yeah. First he's George Kalina, then the Chief of Police. That's right. And that, and that, and that speaks measures right there. It's, it's a preface to the whole conversation that we're going to have. So think about this. Chief of Police, large agency, large city, Miami, coming down and just hanging out with, with the fellas. Shooting the breeze on a podcast. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and he's rocking the shirt. Did you see the shirt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rolling Stones. Yeah. Yeah, I've been to, been to South Florida, been to Miami a few times. So uh, so it's a, it's a distinct honor um, for, you, uh, for us to have you on the show. Thank you so much for you coming on the show, sir. No, listen, it's an honor for me to be here, man. I, I appreciate the invite. Yes. So uh, we're going to get into an array of topics. Okay. I, I and mean, man, 2020 has been a very busy year. <laughs> That's a way to put it. Right? That is a way to put it, right? And that's, I guess that's the best way to put it. Yeah. It's been a busy year. So, so navigating through uh, the 2020 as a chief, uh, I, could, uh, I can imagine the difficulty that it is uh, or it is to have that position and to navigate a whole agency and deal with everything. So I want to get into some of the stuff okay. that uh, we've been going through and that you have been uh, leading the charge in. Um, however, uh, prior to uh, this conversation, just want to touch on one of our officers. We lost one of our officers, um, uh, Aubrey Johnson. Officer mm -hmm. Aubrey Johnson recently lost him, um, a medical condition that uh, he suffered an injury on duty and then uh, later progressed to a medical condition. And then he unfortunately passed away. Um, uh, as a chief of a large agency, uh, you know, you have a lot of officers that work underneath you, a lot of civilians as well, a lot of employees. How do, how do you... Uh, how do you handle that as an officer, uh, as a chief? chief. Yeah, um, dealing with something, one of your own passed away. Man, it's obviously extremely difficult. It's emotional, and it's emotional for a couple of different reasons. So first, you know, he's 28 years old, mm -hmm. right? So that in itself is just something that's not natural, that, that yeah. is difficult to comprehend that someone that young uh, can die from a medical condition. So for those that don't know, he was chasing someone on foot. Mm -hmm and hurt his Achilles tendon and, uh, you know, went to the hospital, got some meds, went home and ultimately suffered a blood clot, you know, mm -hmm. so directly related to his job. And again, at that age, that by itself is shocking. Yep. Uh, number two, I, I, I know his dad. He worked with us. Yes. Uh, his mom was a dispatcher for 32 years. I know her. I worked with her when I was a lieutenant mm -hmm. on the bridge. And those are lovely, lovely people. So you hurt for them. You hurt for the loss of the 28-year-old. And, and then you hurt because he wears the same patch that we were. Yes. And, uh, and it's like family. Yep. So it's a, it's a bizarre feeling, Nick. Uh, that you don't have a personal relationship with someone and in your heart you feel like you lost a family member. Yes. I don't know if the general public can can appreciate that. Yeah. But that that really is the feeling and it's it's difficult. Yeah, and I didn't I didn't know him personally. I have some uh, people that that we work together in the same unit, some coworkers that were in his academy class. Yeah. And they just say the best things about him, charismatic. Uh, you light up the room, make you laugh. He, he, very kind person. Very kind. Got in, got in trouble in the academy a couple of times for doing, doing yeah, some dabs, dabs and stuff. So <laughs> you could just tell he was just a very likable guy, and uh, he, will be, he will be missed. He will be apartment. missed, so, without a doubt. So uh, just wanted to get that out of the way yeah. because that's something in the forefront that, that uh, just happened. You know? So just to add to 2020, man. What a year we've been having. What a year we've been having. Yeah. Um, I, I want to get further in, into the weeds on 2020. Sure. However, we have a lot of aspiring police officers, and okay. I think I say that every episode we talk to them. They're sitting in the car. He's talking to me. <laughs> uh, because, because you bring on uh, a lot of good knowledge. Yeah, and, good, great and, knowledge. Yeah. So and what better an experience. Knowledge, what better knowledge to bring on a chief, you know? The top. Uh, and guess what? At one point, you weren't a chief. At one point, you were sitting... Mm -hmm 
in an academy class just like everybody else, right? So can you walk me through maybe right before you, you got into law enforcement, what, what dri driv drove? drove. Sure, thank you, Jesse. That's why I see how you, he corrects me there. What drove you there? And then uh, how you set yourself up and what was your mental thought process in seeing the future? So it's interesting. Um, you know, I didn't know that this was even the profession that I was going to get into. I, I went to Miami-Dade right. um, as a history major because I thought that I wanted to be an attorney. Nice. Um, but going through that process, I, I remember having a conversation with my girlfriend at the time, my wife now, and, and telling her, you know, I, I think that what would really make me happy is being a police officer, but I don't know if my oldest brother that I really look up to is, is like a father figure to me and my mom, and are, are they going to be as impressed with that yeah. as being an attorney? Right. And, and I remember her telling me, honey, you, you got to do whatever it is that makes you happy. Because right. if you're not happy, what else matters? Um, it, it doesn't matter what titles you have or any of that. Ultimately, you got to do what makes you happy. And, and honestly, I just needed that one person to say, hey, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's it. I was in. You know, so I, uh, I applied. I, you know, I was very, very grateful to get accepted into the academy. That was a long process just to get in. We had a hiring freeze. And, and it was a difficult time. But... Ultimately, you know, like you said, just like everybody else, I wanted to get through the academy. I, I wanted to make sure that I graduated. Then I wanted to make sure I got through my training, you know, program. And then I wanted to make sure that I got through that probationary period. Yeah. Really, just like everybody else, I just want to make it. I just right. want to be able to, you know, call this my permanent job. So those, your goals were, you didn't see that far. Like, I just, I need to get here. This is what's important right now. And eventually I'll get here, and then, then I have to take that serious, and then eventually I'll get here, and then I have to, you know, and you continue moving forward. Working on each step. Yeah, yeah. I, guess, I guess when you're, when, you're, when you're coming into the law enforcement profession, you don't really know what to expect. You know, but you, once you get there, you're like, oh, man, I really need to focus on this right now. So that stuff will come, but I need to, if I don't do this, I'm not going to get there. So Without a doubt. I mean, it really was like that. Now, I wasn't thinking, honestly, I need to take care of step one. Um, and, and by the way, that applies in, in every profession, man. Don't worry about step 10. Yeah. Sometimes people think I, I, I need to be here and that's great, yeah. but you really got to take those steps because you learn every step of the way. There's yeah. an experience, but I, I really wasn't thinking about step 10. I legitimately only thought I need to graduate the police academy and I never had any thoughts of, of moving up the ranks. Um, I think Nick, I must have been on nine, 10 years, believe it or not. And I worked in a lot of different units, street narcotics, our task force, uh, special investigations. And I just moved around a bit. And I found myself complaining quite a bit about, you know, the leadership yeah. and the sergeants that I had. And some of them were great. And, and you know, we recognize those that really just aren't. Right. Because they they're just show up as part of the job. And, uh, and I remember complaining about it and then thinking, you know, instead of just saying they should this and they should that, I should become they. Yeah. or you know one of them and and see if i can do something with it and and you know that was it i became a sergeant i really enjoyed it and then after that i thought well i i, I do want to take the next step and then there i really did think now i want to take the next one and now i want to take the next one okay so that, that so as you were going you were like oh i got something let me let me keep going let me keep going but i want to bring it back to that point that you made i uh, think you have to be the change you can't you can't just sit there man, 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 and complain about everything that's going on you have to take it upon yourself. Otherwise, stop complaining. What do you, that's what I like to say. You know, like my kids. Are, so what are you doing about it? That's right. Yeah. What are you doing about it? You have a problem with that? Okay, so tell me what, what's your plan. What are you doing about it? Oh, I, didn't, I didn't have a plan. Well, we have to figure out a plan because this is how it's going to change. You can't just expect it to change on its own. Yeah, and, and, and honestly, it's real simple for all of us. And we all do it, you know, some more than others. It's really simple to kind of point the finger and mm. say you. And yeah. when you have the clarity of hindsight to second guess and, and kind of think you know it all, yeah. that's easy. It's a little harder to kind of look in the mirror or, or you know, kind of gently point that finger at yourself yeah. and, and come to that realization of, well, you know, what about you? What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that part's a, you know, that's Lightly, a little bit yeah, more. The, the mirror, the mirror is very important to look the in mirror that mirror is important, and, man. And, and use the thumbs first and say, let me make sure before I spout this off. That Am it, I squared away? Is it, yeah. I have my stuff in order. It, it is what, because I, I, I find myself doing that, you know, yeah. am, am I complaining about, wait a minute, I do that same thing. 
I need to learn. I yeah. need to learn from that first and not bring it up and learn from it and, and make those adjustments and then be able to show somebody instead of just telling them. I like it. Uh, before becoming a cop, any jobs? Man, I sold drugs. So. <laughs> Another <laughs> one. Hey, there's, there's a, a drug dealer out there is like, I, that could be me. No, I'm just kidding. I really wasn't a drug dealer, it's, but I did sell drugs. I sold generic drugs. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he so, set us up. You set so, us up. You I, us I very, really did. I, you know, I worked for a, a distributor where I, yeah. I called. You know, I was uh, I worked in sales, calling uh, pharmacies. Selling drugs, so yeah. I, I did do that for a while, and Scheduled and they didn't like, drugs. yeah, yeah they and they were, didn't like that joke, you F know, FYI, with, with backgrounds. Think, they didn't like yeah, that. Yeah, the recruiter, he didn't like that. Yeah, I yeah. think I think we just made headlines here. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna, Chief, we're gonna do what the media does to you. We're gonna snip that little piece out. Yeah, yeah. Chief, we sold drugs. That's right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and that's what they do. <laughs> <laughs> sold drugs and then just clips right to Nick's yeah, shot, that, my shot going. That's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tune in to the next episode. That's right. We found our promo. So okay, so that's good though. So. Again, we've had people, and the way you said it, it just caught us off guard. You hooked me completely. Touche, sir. Touche. Uh, but we have people out there in a position that could never be me, you know. And then I just want to put you, put those, those those people listening, saying, "Man, maybe one day I can do that." You know, he did it. I can do it. So, and before um, selling over-the-counter drugs, what what'd you do? Just a student. No, I worked uh, different jobs. Uh, I worked some construction. I, I worked in, uh, like I said, selling the drugs, yeah. sales. Um, I worked, uh, you know, did some carpentry. Just, you know, just different jobs to kind of get through. That's good. Yeah, until until I was able to get into the academy. Yeah, so, so some Life people, experience. Yeah, and you, you know what? You, you're in a spot now where it's all about what you're doing now, but it's good to hear where you came from. Sure. So, and that sets it up for anyone listening out there to be like, I can, hopefully one day I can do that. Without so a doubt. That's cool. Um, now, uh, do we, are we ready to get into 2020? Because I got tons of tons of things, and I'm like, man, this is going to be such a, a a great guest to talk about. Because being in charge of a large agency and dealing with the stuff, and and a, a fact, it, it affected you at one point. And I'm going to talk about um, COVID, sure. COVID-19. It's a big topic right now. Has been for what now since March, March, February, I mean, March. Depends on depends who you're talking you to. Watch January, <laughs> February, March. Yeah, it depends yeah. on who you're talking to. Yeah. But uh, COVID-19 is a big thing, um, and little by little, it started uh, impacting the city, between shutdowns, curfews, and all that stuff. And I know some were implemented by the county, some by the city itself. Take me to being a chief in a large agency and how you, either, had to deal with some uh, of the challenges. I guess like PPE gear. And uh, take me from the beginning when you first got the news and you started tuning in. Like, what's this, what's this COVID stuff all about? And then you were like, wait, we need to get ahead of this COVID stuff. So, man, it was stressful, and yeah. it was stressful because my my primary concern was, how do I protect my policemen? Yep. You know, how do I protect all the employees here? And and because it was COVID and not something that I can default to some previous experience. Yeah. Or I didn't, you know, I know a lot of people, Nick, thankfully, across the country. And, and there are things where I call someone in a different city, a chief in another big city, and say, hey, man, I know you guys had something like this. You know, what could you tell me? Yeah. But I, I didn't have that here. Mm -hmm. I had no previous experience that I could default to and no one that I can call and ask. And it was stressful for me thinking, how do I protect my officers if, if there's a misstep? It could cost the lives of my policemen and I'm asking them to please come to work yeah I'm asking them please show up and and don't abandon everyone else that's afraid and so that was a difficult balance it really started canceling Gaiocho so I, yeah. I I didn't sign the permit for the event and okay. and they were not happy with me and Gaiocho is normally when Gaiocho's in March March it's a, so, so there it is. essentially it's the largest street festival that that I know of and they say in the millions of attendance um but it goes, so let's take it, you said you didn't sign a permit. So in order to throw in a, a festival or an event like that, it has to go through our permit process. You've got to pull a permit for that. And this is something important that mm -hmm. we're going to touch. I, I, I want to talk about this now because later it's gonna, we're going to tie it in with something else that, you know, 2020. Right. But you have to pull a permit whenever you're going to do something, take over the street to do a festival or something. Right. And I didn't know it had to go, and I didn't know it had to go to the chief's office. I thought it was just something right. with the city, obviously now. 
I know. So you didn't sign the permit. That's that's I, also what that's what my office does, and we do that the ground level stuff right. to send to the chief, okay. and and you do it's uh, with SEPTED crime prevention and environmental design, and so you look at everything that that permit requester is giving mm -hmm. uh and just to make sure and, and our side of the house is law enforcement makes, makes sense because uh, making sure safety is and you there. have to allocate officers in order to to cover that event. yeah what's fire. happening what are the elements of it uh how does this affect the community are we able to properly staff it those are the general questions yeah. that you look at Cayocho is something that we you know we have on cruise control we've done it every year the yeah. difference here was that it attracts not just uh, a ton of, of uh, people that come out to a, a street festival where you're shoulder to shoulder, you're sweating, yeah. you're singing, uh, but it brings people from all over the country as well. True. Now, not signing that and meeting with the Kiwanis of Little Havana, which are the ones that put it together, right. and them explaining to me how people will not be able to work, how this is their fundraiser that uh, feed scholarships that feed sports programs at parks and schools how they use this revenue uh, to buy uh, school supplies for kids that don't have school supplies hold on you know um, that's all right you know they're 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 spraying <laughs> this is South Florida I know. I know well we have the studio and and the big window by the studio there's somebody outside cutting the grass up here that yeah. it might not even show up all right sounds good sorry sorry to interrupt no that's okay continue sir yeah so hearing that yeah. is it was like the first reality of wow you make a decision that on the very surface seems like this is a good decision because you're thinking of people's safety. Right. But these are the repercussions of that decision. There's always so many layers. The further ripples. Nick, yeah, that people don't recognize yeah. or even see. And, and yeah. this was one of them where it was like, oh, goodness. But ultimately, I, you know, I feel like it was the right decision. And then it kind of started from there. Yeah. One big decision after another yeah. on what we do and how we do with COVID. At the moment, people were probably like, what? Why are they? Why are they doing that? Oh, and absolutely. Then, then yeah, they look in back. March, yeah, in they March, look sure. back after a couple of months of like, oh, thank God he did that. You know what I mean? Because that could have been a, almost a super spreader event. Oh, there's no doubt with yeah. the with the hundreds of thousands of people that we would have had. And and I'll give you another example of later on when people were thankful. So one of the first things that I did too was I separated our communications. You know, uh, the dispatchers and the call takers that we have. Yeah. It worried me that if a couple people get sick and we have to quarantine everybody, well, who picks up the phone? Who dispatches the calls? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I separated the group into two and I sent half of them to an, another location to dispatch from there. They weren't happy. No. They're comfortable with where they're at yeah, and, right. and, you know, where they sit and yeah. where they keep their, their lunch, et cetera. But when other people started getting sick in other agencies, especially in communications. Then, Broward County. Yeah. Then, then I got literally got emails from employees in communications that that were sending me, Chief. I'm I'm grateful to you that you made this decision uh, because now we see how serious this is. Yeah. And that that comes from okay. So, if for instance, if there's a hurricane, right? What do we go? We go Alpha Bravo, which essentially is. You're pulling in all your resources, no days off. One shift covered 12 hours, another shift covers 12 hours. All hands on deck. COVID, you put all hands on deck, everyone together, right? What happens? There's a higher likelihood of contracting somebody gets and bumping sick, into each other. There goes your whole uh, everyone, alpha. Yeah. Everyone. There goes, could you imagine an entire department going, rendering, uh, you know, getting COVID, right? And then now, now what do you do? Because there's mandatory quarantine for 14 days. Um, so it was, at first, the thoughts were, from the ground level, is we're going to go off of Bravo, right? And that's because, you know, you don't, you don't foresee, you don't think right. of it that way. You're just like, yeah. there's an emergency, Alpha Bravo, throw Alpha Bravo at it. And then we, it was like, okay, this, these people are going to go over here. These people are going to work over there. And then let's spread everybody out. And then I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's all—it's a whole. It's and a that's whole new why process. he wears yeah. the four stars. <laughs> Continuity, right? Continuity yeah. of operations. We got to be able to function. And my goal was, if we lost fifty percent of the department, yeah, do we have the ability to function? And, and and if we do, how do we get there? What do we need to do? Who do we need to separate? How do we protect people? Yeah. Uh, against you know against themselves because you know in this profession. Man, we, we kind of like to come together. You know, yes. we feel safer in groups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I can talk with you. I don't feel threatened by you, et cetera. I yeah. can kind of relax. 
And here it's like, hey guys, I, I need you to yeah. let's go, stay, let's stay go, away from each when, other. When you know? things aren't safe, let's go two to a car. Let's, hey, exactly. Let's, let's yeah. And all of a sudden, throwing two in a car. You're... And now there's no more two to a car. No. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was. I can. I can see the difficulty. And you know. And being open-minded and looking at the bigger picture. Some people have a, have a tough time to do uh, doing that because they just see what they see and they don't realize. Let's me, let me take a step back and look at everything or why things are happening. I like to analyze things. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Why? Okay, that makes sense. Oh, because it's not alpha bro because of this. So even like the, at one point, um, worldwide, I guess a nationwide, the whole world's going through this. So nationwide, there's a shortage of PPE gear. Uh, but we were, you know, the community joined in, and then there was, okay, now we have one set for each uh, the, of the heavy-duty stuff, and then a designated person do that, and then you have to start realizing, hey, there's a shortage. There's nothing that the chief, the chief can't just go, to, okay, you know what, yeah, let me go ahead and make this stuff. We got to make do with what we got. So a lot of things that were coming out was just like, hey, we got to figure it out. We got to figure it out. Let's make this happen. That works. Let's put it in place. I could just tell, I'm like, this is a, this is a something big, you know. Every day. Yeah. Every day it was like that. Every day there was what felt like it was a critical decision. Yes. In what normally would be something fairly mundane. Yeah. They order more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? yeah. If yeah. some is good, you know, more is better. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden, it, we're, you know, we're calling people across the country. We're... It, it almost felt like we're doing backdoor deals yeah. with someone, you know, yeah. hey, man, can I can I cut in here with you on this? Yeah. Um, and then it was also reminding people, hey, listen, remember, just kind of like a, with a hurricane that everybody's scrambling for water. Hey, remember, you can go to your spigot and, and turn, turn it on, on yeah. and yeah. fill, you know, your bathtub. Yeah. You know, you, there's water. But people freak out. Well, it was the same kind of thing here. Hey, remember, I get it. If I don't have a bottle of hand sanitizer... Bring a bar of soap with you. Yeah, so yeah. Wash, wash your hands. Because if, if what you want to do is clean, be able to clean your hands. Yeah. But we, we kind of get wrapped up in, I need this. Yeah. This is going to help me. Instead of thinking a little creatively, okay, well, if I don't have that, how do I make do? Yeah. And, uh, man, but it was a challenge. The, the biggest thing was the health department and getting the locations where someone was COVID positive. Yeah. So what was big for us, which, by the way, I, I took a lot of pride that a lot of departments across the country started to follow suit was I want to flag locations where someone was sick. I I don't need to know the person or when. I just want to know if they were sick. That way we can flag it, we can track it, we can do a heat map, kind of like with crime. Where do we have most of our cases? And give that information to the fire department so they can go out and proactively test. But more importantly, so we can tell our officers, hey, uh, this location's been flagged. Someone there was sick. Yeah. So make sure that you're distant, that you're wearing gloves, that you put a mask on. And, you know, you don't have to put your hands on someone. Don't. That yeah. kind of thing. Let's take a quick break. All right. When, when we, we come, come back, back. Uh, not only did you have to handle the d- department in COVID-19, but you yourself. Yes. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about <laughs> okay. that and we'll move it along. Sounds good. Hey, everybody. Check out the new law enforcement boot from Hikes. Woo! Built to last, it's full leather, got a really sleek design, but still very formal if you have strict uniform requirements. Also, of course, it's super light and built like a tennis shoe, good for comfort and for foot pursuits. Anti-static, that means no shocky shocky. So great for my Bontech guys. Also metal free, great if you work around metal detectors so it's not beep 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 all day. All their boots have a standard one year warranty. With these boots, you can add a year onto that, the one year warranty, hence the two year warranty, by signing up online. And guess what, guys? They are hooking you guys up for listening to the Donut Shop podcast with 15% off if you just go to Hikes and enter the discount code DONUT. So head on over to Hikes, check them out. You know where to find them, hikes.com. And remember, guys, heroes wear hikes. All right, and we're back. We're back. Uh, Nick started bringing that up, and, and I, I think it's very important to say um, a lot of the pressure does come up on the chief, and with with COVID and at a chief, you have your normal uh, stressors, I'm sure, with with uh, with politics, citizens worrying about your officers, protecting them with normal stuff, which sometimes different levels of protection day and night, but COVID, 24/7, COVID officers 24 7 their families 24 7 uh your family 24 7 you 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 know we aren't necessarily safe being inside a 
police department that might have bulletproof walls and stuff. Yeah. May not be safe in a lot of places so, with COVID. And, and, and it was at one point you got COVID yourself. And I remember like, oh, all right, chief, take us home, baby. Take us home. You, know, you got Re this. Remo you know? Remotely, please. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, six feet away, take us home, sir. Take <laughs> no, but I remember like seeing you. And then it was good that you, you put updates. Hey, guys, yeah. I'm good. I got some symptoms, you know, but I'm good. So you want to take us through a little bit of and when Man, you got it, it you were like, oh. <gasps> It was stressful, yeah. and and I'll and listen. You know, I'm a man, yeah. which means that I have very little pain tolerance, <laughs> and I panic right when there's anything medical. So, um, I I wasn't feeling well, and um, any little cough, I did think, uh oh, is this the start of yeah. this downward spiral? And I kept thinking too, man, I I have been kind of obsessed with. How do I protect the policeman? The irony that I could be the police department's first casualty yeah. um, because it's possible. You don't know how it's going to affect you. Right. Man, that was, you know, all those things went through my mind. I thought, man, I, I can't believe that I am sick. I, w I had symptoms. I remember it, but when was this? Like, what was, like, the month, date? Gosh, uh, was it in I think it was early May? on, right? Yeah, May? May, June, around yeah. that time. Just, I think just was, for the audience. That yeah, may not, may right not around realize. that time. It was in the beginning. It was right. Right. it was like COVID, COVID, COVID. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, uh, uh, Chief got it, and we're like, oh, boy. Yeah. Right. It was in oh, a lot of the boy. unknown time because you know what you were hearing on the news, and yeah. you're looking Absolutely. at New York, and you're, oh, my god. Luckily, I only had symptoms for about three days, but it was a searing headache. It yeah. was just terrible. Mm. And I had a, a slight cough. And like I said, when I would cough, it, it was a stressor, that alone. And, and by the way, for me, it was just like, <clears throat> Yeah. But that alone, I thought, uh oh, yeah. is this going to start now? I never uh, felt like I was short of breath, but if I if I walked a little bit and if I was on the phone walking a little bit, right away I I felt winded. Yeah. So it wasn't like I was gasping for air, but it was almost like you walked up a couple flight of stairs where you get there and you're like, whew. Yeah. You know, I, I felt oh, wow. like that. So, but luckily it was about three and a half days of symptoms. And then I started to feel better. I, I walked a lot outside. I got sun. And um, I, the doctor told me, whatever you do, don't stay in bed. So even if you feel very weak, and I did, to get out of bed, you know, work your lungs. Don't you, the COVID is telling you to rest. Yes. Uh, your body's telling you to rest. That's not what you do. You, you got to exercise your lungs. That way it, it doesn't progress. And fortunately, that was the case for me. I mean, it, you know, I didn't like being stuck at home. Yeah. But I was very grateful that I only had symptoms for about three and a half days. So it was like uh, almost sitting out in a big game. Where Correct. you're like, man, I need to get back in. I got to get back in there. Absolutely. Yeah, I really sure. did feel that way. I mean, I was having meetings and stuff anyway. Yeah. Uh, after. Virtual, uh, virtual. Virtual meetings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I didn't want the staff to see me looking ill because I, I, I looked ill. Yeah. Um, I didn't want that either. But once I felt better, then I started having the virtual meetings. And then I also did the video to the troops that I like to yes. that I like to do, which is awesome. Um, and, and luckily, man, I, I was able to get through it and get back to work. Yeah, I can always tell if the chief's not feeling good because his hair is a little bit off. <laughs> that's one of the things that I wanted to throw in. I was like, it's when you're little, doing these virtual that's meetings, okay. was your hair on point? That's why I'm like, no, no, he's good. He's gonna, he's gonna be all right. He's gonna be all right. So I look a little tired, but his hair is good. How's the how? How was the regiment uh, prior to getting uh, COVID? Like meaning like exercise. I mean, you seem like a healthy dude. You know, I mean, like again, if I'm judging by the hair, a healthy dude, and and you know, stature's looking like a healthy dude. So did you did you have any fears like, oh, I better I better pump the brakes or. I'm really, you know, it seems like you're a fit guy. I Man, I was really careful. And so we, you know, technology has been something that's been important for me since I took over, trying to bring in as much technology as possible. For, yeah. So for us, it was a really quick transition into uh, having virtual meetings as soon as COVID was something that we thought was legit. And yeah. so like, March, we were already, hey, man, we're, we're going to meet remotely. We're going to have virtual meetings. We're going to be distant. Um, I still come in contact with a lot of people. And so even though 
you police yourself. Uh, honestly, if you go into an elevator, you press a button. Uh, I mean, who knows, right? Yeah. If it, you instantly don't wash your hands, and you don't realize how often you touch your face. So I don't know how I got it. I thought about it and thought about it. Um, I I did interact with a lot of people after COVID. Yeah. Um, I did not interact with a lot of people. I, I was even more, you know, okay, you stand over there and we can communicate, yeah. at a, you know, from, a, from quite a bit of distance. And, mm. and, and, and then, because I was kind of going towards like the, the way you took care of yourself yeah. prior to COVID. Do you think that helped you out, get through it? Again, you, or are you just caught a, uh, an easy batch? Meaning like uh, health-wise, diet, um, you know, physicality, working out, riding a bike, or whatever, whatever you do. You think I, that, I think so, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah. I, I like to swim. Yeah. Um, I think just knowing that you're exercising your lungs, knowing that it's, it's kind of like almost knowing that you can fight, right? Yeah. And if you know that you're prepared to fight, that you can fight, it, it gives you uh, confidence if you're going to step into the ring, right? Yes. If, if you don't spar, you don't do any training, yeah. right. and you step into the ring, there's more anxiety. You know, yeah. if someone is, is standing across me that wants to punch me in the face. Yeah. Now, if, if you got a little bit of training in, yeah. you, you feel like you're better prepared. So you do feel that way, without a doubt. At least I, I did feel that way. And, and the underlying message here to all the officers listening out there, start training, man. Because you <laughs> might right. run into somebody on a call that wants to fight. And if you don't know how to fight, things can go south. Or, no or, if, or if it's not the fight, you might get some illness like a COVID yeah. where that's going to also help you out, you know, having that stamina, that uh, ability to, to, to run a couple miles, have the stronger lungs and stuff. I mean, that's, that's what uh, a lot of people are sharing nowadays is that, that the, 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 the COVID being able to fight it off and withstand it uh, goes back to some of that physical no fitness and stuff. And, and it almost is like, there's nothing to do nowadays so i'm like always going to parks riding bikes doing right, stuff yeah, yeah. with my kids I and mean, we're outdoors running around and doing stuff yeah, losing so drones and stuff yeah, yeah. so you know, hopping fences trying to, trying hopping to get fences. drones back. Yeah, trying to get drones back yeah i lost a drone recently sir i don't want to talk about it <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a department one no, no no so um so you got it you beat it you come back right all right man hey guys follow my lead we got this covid stuff but guess what 2020 has more in store yeah, for you. It's not just COVID. So you want to take a break and we'll come back to that? Very good idea, Nick. We'll take a break. We'll take a break. We'll come back to what happens next. Hey, guys, I want to tell you where I just bought my last few guns from. Zulu Armory. I want to thank those guys. Rolando Garcia. He's a man down there. They're over in Doral, 1365 Northwest 98th Court. Number seven down in Doral. Not too far from the Dolphin Mall. Go check them out. They got great deals. They have ammo in stock right now. Instagram is great too, at Zulu underscore Armory. Go check them out. They always show off what they have in stock. You can preview it. Just give Rolly a call. Welcome back, Chief, <laughs> to interview and interrogation time time. You need to get the, the sound effects. Uh, sir, I put on my campaign hat given to me by Lieutenant Camacho out of PIO. And FHP, sorry. And and the, the, FHP. The PIO. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm trying to do a little intimidation factor. We actually have done, um, at work, we've done Nothing Off the Table episode, right? And I don't know if this was put there, but he had a bayonet on the, on the desk and a grenade. So I don't know if that's like, hey, come here. No, 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 ask me anything you want. And he would just look down at the bayonet, and he would look down at the grenade. You got a little string on the pin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a little string on the pin. <laughs> he tied it. No, no. Anyway. <laughs> Interview. This is where we pull the audience, okay? Um, and they ask questions. Sure. So we let them know you were coming on. Um, obviously, they know who you are. And they had some questions to ask you. No problem. So we're going to rifle off these questions. Justin's going to take the first one, and you answer short, long, whatever you want. Uh, Justin, you ready to go? All right. All right, here we go. You may have gone over this earlier in your segment, but maybe you can go for our guy, G-Man Miami. I'm going to go G-Man underscore Miami. Would like to know the biggest challenge or instance faced as a chief. Man, uh, honestly, the biggest challenge... Um, and, and I don't want it to sound generic, but it's the truth. The biggest challenge is every day staying focused with the thought that the decisions that you're going to make today 
You need to make them thinking what is best for the city. Then what is best for the department, and then lastly, what is best for me, you know, the, the chief. Yeah. And believe it or not, sometimes that that that's not so easy. Uh, sometimes you you know that you're going to take a hit with something. You're going to make a decision that may not be a popular one. Yep. Or you're going to make a decision uh, that that some people are going to deem it political, for mm -hmm. example. But ultimately, making the decision that is best for Miami is what I need to do. Then the next consideration is what's best for the department as a whole. And then lastly, me as an individual. And, you know, sometimes it is going to be about me or you because we're just people. But right. ideally, you're really thinking like that in a V. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good question or good answer. Good answer. Wouldn't expect anything less. <laughs> <laughs> How about this one? And this goes on me. It falls on my shoulders and my bad. But Oliver Simpson on Instagram picks up the slack and says, sir... How many years have you been in police? In the police. In the. In I'm, the just, I'm just reading all the words. <laughs> I'm just reading all the words. It really is. And I like it when people really, say the police. Really. <laughs> so pretty much, uh, yeah. So that, that's my bad. I should have. There's poor interviewing skills for me. But how many years have you been on the department? Thirty years. Three zero. Three zero. All right. So short and sweet to the point. That's it, man. That's it. I like it. What do you got? I am now out of questions because skip o skip skip over the is Nick a good cop question. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's that's the only other one. I I'll go to another one. I go to another one. Yeah. All right, future trooper Tyler, and let's try to change that to future MPD. There we go, Tyler. How I about like that? It. You, I like you, it. you you do realize Tyler that you can change your handle on Instagram. You don't get paid for it, or yeah. you don't have to pay for it. So it's yeah, it's really easy to do. Future police, go whatever. Ahead do Trooper's that. still a uh, 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 very good profession. So here we go. Anyways. What kind of patrol vehicle do you drive? Man, luckily, right now, I have a rental. So I, I have an SUV that I drive. Uh, I normally don't swap out the cars, although they, you know, they tell me, hey, whenever you want a different car, you can switch it out. Yeah. But goodness, I, I've, I've driven all kinds, man. When I first started, it was a diplomat. Uh, oh, when you're a rookie officer, yeah. you get, like, the worst car in yeah, the fleet. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but I'll tell you what, you stepped on the gas and those cars flew. Yeah. I mean, they flew yeah. Caprice. I, I mean, you name it. I drove really. Every, and those cars were hideous. Uh, <laughs> they were. I those, mean, uh, the, as hideous as the current Caprice that came from yeah. Australia. Or? The, Man, it was an ugly car. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you ever saw that car, Nick, but, you I know, remember. part of the wheel well was covered. Yes. I don't even know back. what that was about. Yeah. yeah the back of it. It, yeah. it was just it wasn't a good look. Uh, and I want to build off that. Uh, I was a rookie and I had a. Um, one of the pool cars. Right. A, we don't do that anymore. But however, back when I started, they had pool cars. Uh, if you're a rookie, you don't have an assigned car yet. Once you're on probation, and then you get your assigned car. Well, anyways, I'm driving. You check your equipment before shift, whatever. And uh, checked everything's good. Go out there. And I, a three goes out. So I'm like, Boo! What's a three? Uh, lights and sirens emergency call where you oh. need to get there yesterday. Okay. Safely. So drive. And I'm like, how come these people aren't moving? This is amazing. My sirens and everything is on. And, they're, and I'm looking at them, and they're looking in confusion as I'm driving by. And then I get there, and I notice that the lights, the, I guess the wires in that <laughs> old car, uh, I, started, I started in 07, so it was a 01. So, but the, the wires so that had come apart. The lights weren't working. So I was just running sirens. <laughs> and everyone was looking at me like, what's wrong with this guy? Like, he likes happen. attention. Yeah. He likes attention. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Right. They're just confused. I can't look, see you. I can only hear you. Yeah, the look of confu uh, confusion on their faces as they drove by him. But anyways, but going back with what you said, and you get the old cars, the diplomat. Um, but this, this is a good one. Move on to the next question. This is a good one. Uh, this guy actually works with me. He, been, uh, he got injured not too long ago. And this uh, just paints a picture of the type of chief that you are. And he cheated. He answered four different times, so his question got really, really long. But I'll let him slide. Dad to the future. Dad to the future. Shout out to Ralph. Uh, he says, thanks for reaching out after my injury, Chief. You have shown that despite not being able to please everyone, you have shown you care about the morale and well-being, where is it, of your officers. What? So he's just telling me thank you for that. Okay. What kind of conversation and tips will you give your successor? Because uh, we were going to get to this at the end. Uh, Chief recently announced he's going to be retiring soon. What, uh, what information will you give to your successor? Uh, conversation will you have with your successor? And what tips will you give them? 
Man, honestly, I, I think the biggest thing that I would tell my successor is that you're not going to be able to please everyone. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I, I want to be liked. I, I'm not embarrassed to admit that. Right. You know, I know there's a lot of people that say, oh, I don't care what people think about me. And I, well, you know, I, I wish that I could be that way, but I'm not. Yeah. Uh, but recognizing that you are not going to please everyone. And so you really got to make the decisions that are just the best ones. Because at least you know you're going to be able to sleep at night. Right. At least you know, hey, man, I, I made the decision that I truly believed in my heart was the best one. And that has to be good enough because it's just the best that you have. And at least you know that you can show up to work every day, look people right in the eye and say, hey, man, I come here and I work my tail off for you to help keep you safe, to give you the tools that you need so you can succeed. I think that's really the biggest thing, to be able to walk up to a policeman and not feel like you sold out because a politician put pressure on you right. or some community crew put pressure on you and you made a decision to please them, but you know in your heart that wasn't the best one. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, do what you know is legitimately the best decision and people are just going to have to live with it. And sometimes it's going to work out and sometimes it isn't. But if you do that and people see that you're sincere, your officers primarily and that, that you care about them and you want to do what's best for them. You know, they're they're going to be OK when you do, you know, misstep here and there. You know, they're, they're going to for the most part, they're going to accept it. And uh, that's that's great. And also to come on the Donut Shop podcast. Are you going to tell them to do that? <laughs> Ooh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. First, we'll see. We'll see how the rest of it goes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, that's huge. And and to piggyback off of his comment that you reached out when he was injured. Not only that, but birthdays, right? I, I right. get I get a message on my birthday, and I had uh, my daughter recently, and I got a message from the chief saying congratulations. So he's he's on it. He's on it. So uh, you know, it's not it's it's being noticed and it's being talked about amongst the the your officers they all notice and they acknowledge it and they're very appreciative of that so thank, thank you for that thank you you want me to read this the last uh, one last one which will bring us into the last segment this is this is a good one go all right miss period michael period audrey period myers so miss michael audrey myers says what has had a relatively good yeah what has had a relatively good relationship with citizens while Oh, wait. You want oh. me to read that for you? Yeah, I, I can't read. I, <laughs> now it's my turn. <laughs> Sorry. Mother Jumper. <laughs> Miami has had. What is it? All right. <laughs> Miami has had a relatively good relationship with citizens while he has been there. Mm. Why? So why do you think uh, we've had a relatively good relationship with our, our uh, you know, uh, the people that we serve since you've come into office? Well, I think it's a couple of reasons. One, you know, the, the men and women of Might the police department. Might actually be department. Michelle. My bad. Sorry. It's Michelle? Yeah, probably Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Michael? Michelle? No. Oh, sorry. Right. Um, Michael. I, maybe yeah, sometimes, I'm sometimes it's Michael and yeah. sometimes it's Michelle. I, I, under okay. I understand why she put the Audrey, the middle name, because Mike Myers is uh, Michael. It says Michael Myers. Okay. Oh, so okay. Uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry to interrupt. Uh, sorry, sorry. Sorry. This is an important. Uh, look at you talk. I, I keep breaking doing? stuff up. This is chief here, man. This is chief. All right. Uh, I think it's a combination. So first of all, the, the men and women that are out in the field, right? They're doing a phenomenal job. I've asked them to go out and be the picture of professionalism. And I know that sometimes we fail uh, because we're all just people. And, and, you know, I think the general public thinks like they give you a pill in the academy. And yeah. that turns you into something. But at the end of the day, we're, we're just people. So what I ask my officers, hey, you know, recognize, I recognize that you're just people, but, you know, let, let's go out and be the most disciplined professional police department in the country. So you, you can't be afraid to put it out there in the universe. You know, say it, say it out loud. Then I've asked the public, uh, please support us. We're here for you. I've put these messages, Nick, you know, out to, to the public saying, hey, we're, we're trying our best. We, we're not perfect. We make mistakes. But we really want to come out and serve you and do the best we can. So please support us yep. because we feel your support. We, we see the love that you're sending our way and, and it inspires us to come out and do better for you. This is a two way street. And man, I, I really believe that it's had an impact because, Nick, the amount of emails and letters and things that I have gotten from the general public about our police department and how happy they are with them. Um, and it's a lot more now than it was before. And I really do think that it's part of that. We're here for you. You're here for us. We're a team. You know, we, we, we're going to benefit. You help us and we help you. We all win 
man, I, I think that's resonated with a lot of people. Let's not be like some of these other places that are in turmoil. Let's help each other out here. And I think it's really paid off. Um, and to to lead into the next segment, which we're going to take a break, but sure. you mentioned some other places that were in turmoil. Some things happen across the nation, sure. and we felt some ripple effects uh, here locally. Um, I want to get into that and some of the measures and some things we've been through as a department, and we'll do that after the break. Roger, Roger. Messages. All right. What's up, everybody? Hey, it's Justin. Wanted to thank you. You guys have been huge. Blackout Coffee let us know that you've been killing it over there on our website. Thank you very much. They've even offered a new code for us. It's DSP20. That's going to get you 20% off your order. So DSP20 is going to grab you 20% your re-up of your coffee now that you're probably finished with that first bag. So go over to our website, donutshoppodcast.com, or hit up blackoutcoffee.com to get your 20% off with DSP20. Thanks. Now back to the show. And we're back. All right. You survived, sir. So far. So far. You survived the interrogation round. That's Those are, those are I can't control those. Who knows what happens, from, right? From the audience. When the lights turns red. That's right. That's right. You didn't seem too intimidated, though. <laughs> I got to get a bigger hat. <laughs> okay. So moving forward. And we're taking it to not talk about this would be, uh, you know, we're, we're, we don't want to lob softball. So let's talk about some some of the real stuff. Sure. 2020, obviously COVID's real and all this other stuff. But we'll, I want to touch on this. Minneapolis, uh, we're all familiar with the event. There's no need to go into details with that event. I want uh, there was a ripple effect that happened somewhere across the country in another community that people in Miami maybe not even visited. Right. As a as a chief. Looking at the incident, unfortunate incident, and you're going, man, that it's not a good look. It's not a good incident, and it's some bad shit has happened there. Did you expect to feel ripple effects that far into our community, into our streets? I thought it was possible, and and it's interesting question, right? Because for some people, they may think, well, certainly you should have expected something, but yeah. you know, when when. The George Zimmerman acquittal happened. There right. were uh, riots and and demonstrations in other cities, but not in Miami. Right. Uh, Michael Brown. We didn't have anything in Miami. Right. Uh, but but things happen elsewhere. Uh, when there, the incident in Baltimore with Freddie Gray. Right. Um, so there was quite a few, and we didn't really have anything happen in Miami. This felt different, though. This felt like man, this. You know, the, the video speaks for itself, right? And it, right. It, this level of callousness that you kind of see there that it make, made everybody cringe, law yeah. enforcement and not, where it's like, wow, this is rough to see. Yes. Um, this isn't one of those incidents where if you're on the law enforcement side, you're thinking, well, you don't have the complete picture. You don't know all the facts. Yeah. You don't know what the person was thinking, feeling. Um, this didn't feel like that. And so I thought, man, it's certainly possible. Um, if you recall, Nick, I did the video that I sent out to the officer yes. saying, hey, um, we could have something and, yeah. and, you know, make sure that you show your best side, that you're professional. Don't take anything personal. Remain disciplined. Yes. Um, you know, just kind of preparing. I did not know when. Right. So one of the things that a, a lot of times people will ask, well, you know, what's your level of preparation? Clearly, you should be prepared. Well, you know, when you mobilize a police department and you're bringing, you cancel days off and you're bringing everyone in every day, well, if you start that day one and a week has gone by and nothing has yet taken off here, you already have an exhausted police department. Right. So the, the timing, trying to predict, is something going to happen? And if so, when? Or, you know, trying to read the pulse of the community following social media, those are all factors. So I certainly think thought we could have something i just didn't know what so from the boots on the ground uh perspective i saw things that were going on and like you said similar events have happened across the nation things you know on fire and in the streets whatnot my wife was a little uh worried babe no worries we're good with our community we've had stuff that has have happened across the nation people want to express their feelings we work together with the community. Yes. We do a convoy. Hey, we get together with the leaders that are talking. Where do you guys want to go? Let's let's make it a safe route. Let's plan this together. Let's be heard. Uh, let us help you. 
And I told her, nothing to worry about. Driving in the work. Uh, uh, earlier that day, earlier that day, we did that. Earlier that day, we did that, right? Thousands and thousands of people on a march. Chief, you were out there. I know the mayor was out there. And we were like, hey, we're going to work together. Let's do it, right? And then driving into work, turn on the radio, the, the police radio, and I hear a little thing. So I'm like, ah, maybe, ah, ah. And then it started progressing a little bit to a point where I'm like, no. You know, and, um, you know, I guess that's on me. You just, you know, you, you like, a, you take a, a traffic stop. It's always going to be the same traffic stop. I've done these tracks a, a thousand times, and all right. of a sudden yeah, something yeah. pops off, and you're like, so maybe it's on me, but you have to plan. As a chief, you have to plan for the worst, hope for the best, and this is what we have in place. So at what point, because I said you were out there, right? At what point did you notice, like, oh, this is going good, or, hmm, this is... All right, I see, a, I see the direction going. At what point was it like the, the red flags going up? Or was there not a point and then all of a sudden you're just like, how did we get here? There really isn't a how, to, how did we get here. Yeah. You know, that happens much later, Nick. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's almost like a training exercise yes. or when you debrief something. So you're, you're really, while it's happening, you don't think, how did we get here? You're, you're thinking, how do we clean it up? Yep. How do we keep people safe? Um, and, and what's the very next step? Because there's so many things that are going through your head. The one thing that I did know was, so the station was never going to be in jeopardy, right? Some people were wigged out that we have protesters at the rear gate. Right. You know, believe it or not, I was more worried about the protesters if they would have made the decision to try to come into the station. Yeah. Because, I, I you know, I know how we are at Miami PD. And, and when I say that, I don't mean that we're an abusive police department, yeah. but the level of pride yes. that exists inside our officers is really unlike what I've seen in a lot of places. And so I thought, man, I, I hope this remains just exactly where it's at. It's the balancing of we want to show restraint because ultimately we want to keep the support of the public, right? I don't want to make it seem like we're the ones that lit the spark. Right. I want it to be abundantly clear that, hey, now we have no choice but to have to respond. And if you're at the ground level, that may be difficult for you to understand. You might be thinking, hey, man, somebody's throwing something at me. The second someone threw something, we should be responding. Well, maybe, but is it safe? Yeah. Right. If we advance at that moment, are we exposing our flank? Are we exposing the station? Are we exposing the people that haven't had time to don their equipment, get gas masks, et cetera? The second that I thought it was safe, then we deployed chemical agents uh, and less than lethal to make sure that we're able to pull people back. Then after that, of course, the plan now is, OK, listen, earlier in the day, we allowed them to come up to the station to talk to us. And that was cool, nothing happened. But now you came to the station, the rear gate, and it didn't go that way. So now we're not gonna allow you to do that anymore. But at least I would have the ability to tell the public, hey, no, I'm, I'm willing to listen to you. And I'm gonna protect you if you protest. But I did this, and look what happened. Yes. And people are gonna have to understand that. You know, it gives me something to tell the public. What I don't want is ever to have a scenario where we're trying to suppress people's free speech, mm -hmm. where it looks like we're carrying a heavy hammer. Oh, we're, we're hoping someone does something so we can come out in this giant use of force. I don't want people to do, you know, to think that because we ultimately need their support. And then lastly, I don't want that. Th those people, the ones that did what they did, that are throwing the rocks, that are uh, setting a car on fire, they're hoping for an additional flashpoint because they want to rally more people. Yep. So, you know, I'm mindful of that. I'm mindful of this is what they want. So hopefully it turns into something bigger. Well, I, I didn't want to give them that. Yeah. You know, I wanted to show a certain level of restraint and then, okay, enough's enough. Enough's enough. And, and uh, can I, I'm going to give you my analysis of everything sure. from, the, from the ground level and then you can correct if, if, if it's wrong or not. But... Um, from the ground level, this is what this is what I saw and perceived and everything, and what I've seen since, and how things I think are are going. Uh, initially, everyone is, um, you know, and, and has the right to be upset with what happened in Minneapolis, right? You have people out there, they're out there for the right reasons. They want to see change, and and they want to hear their their message to be heard, right? And then you have some people out there. So let's say there's 
how many people out there? 20,000 people maybe? Or well, I don't know, how many thousands of people out there protesting, right? In the initial day. Then you have uh, a couple knuckleheads in there, in that, embedded in that crowd. They don't care about the message. They want to they cause wreak havoc, you know? So they're out there, they throw a rock. People are like, is this what we're doing? We're, we're going we're gonna to throw a rock? OK, uh, I guess we're throwing a or more or less, more or less, right? Or just like, I guess we're really upset that these people are throwing rocks. But these guys out there with other intentions, knowing what to do. And then uh, I think after that initial shock and awe, you know, a couple of police cars went up in fire, that the community that was like, we're, we're cool with the message, but we're not cool with the way that we're doing it especially with our police agency. And that goes back to the question, um, the, 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 the last mm -hmm. question we had. Ms. Myers. Yeah, Ms. Myers, Ms. Michael Myers, uh, uh, that, that she had. is like, you guys have a good relationship. And little by little, I think th the people still have that, that intention, like what, that, that, didn't, that it wasn't good that what happened. We need to change some things. But we're not going to go out there and do that. And then little by little, the, the crowd started getting smaller to it got to people that were, and, and, and I don't say this because I'm speculating. I've just watched videos of people in Miami, because I, I do uh, inter, internet research, live streams, and all that stuff. Now, these people, I'm from Oakland. I'm from out, like, out of town. They're out of town with a different agenda, and they just want to go in there, blend in, and cause some issues. Once some stuff started, uh, you know, settling down, and we were able to distinguish, like these are going to be our, our people and identify. I think our community, more or less, is cool with the message that that's going on, but they're also cool with us. I, and I don't know if you've seen that. Oh, and, without a doubt, yeah. and not only have I seen it, I, I mean, this was our plan, Nick. Our plan was listen, we need to be mindful that we have to maintain the community's support. And so every decision that we make, we, we're going to make it thinking, how is this going to be perceived? So first, obviously, is everyone's safety. And even if the officers want to go out and take action against the group, if, if there's 100 protesters and I got five officers and they're thinking we don't care, we want to go to them, no. No, you're not. And I, whether you like it or not, I'm going to protect you against you. Right. Mm -hmm. We're going to get enough officers where you can do it safely. Uh, but knowing that ultimately if, if we keep our public support, we're going to win. Yeah. We're going to win. People are going to be able to go out and protest peacefully. And then when we do have to take action, they're going to know that we're only doing it because we didn't have a choice. Um, and, and that was the plan going forward. And so certainly... Um, to your point, once the community saw, hey, man, you know, if people go out and they protest peacefully, our police department's cool with that. Yep. But if you don't, then there's actions that have to be taken. And, and by the way, part of something that was important for us was, you know, we put a task force together. You're going to review every bit of video. And when we identify someone that picked up a rock, threw it and harmed one of our officers or damaged property, we're going to come arrest you. So yeah. just because you think that you came out and you hid in a crowd and you broke the law and then you went home that night and you think it's over, it's not over. Right. We're going to come for you. And that's not, a, you know, Mr. Macho thing. That's yeah. like, hey, man, everybody here is accountable. Mm -hmm. Right. You want me to hold my officers accountable when they do something wrong? I I'm with you. But I'm going to hold you accountable when you do something wrong, too. We're going to come for you. And we have. And, and I like letting the officers know, hey, remember how you didn't like that? Well, we we got that guy. Yeah, it's happened. It's been yeah. it happened a couple mm -hmm. times. We, we big deal. It's happened seven times. There you go. <laughs> so a couple, several. That's, that's it's, right. It's several. So then that that's a big thing with the technology. Without a doubt. And what yeah. we have uh, implemented with the real time crime center and how we're taking the twenty first century. Is it twenty first century still? Because now we're in twenty second or yeah. whatever. We're taking the, the now the future and we're mold, we're we're meshing it with law enforcement and we're able to come up with solutions like that's cool. We got you. Go run. We'll that's get right. you. Yeah, we'll get you. That's yeah. That that's one of the things that you always had to to, to teach people. Sometimes, like, hey man, we got the guy's ID. Right. Like, yeah. let him let him run. Yeah. You know, as long as he's not risking it, as long as he's not flying through intersections yeah. in a car, yeah. gonna hurt people. But we got his ID. So oh. we ran his tag, matches the description of the driver. You know, we'll go get him in a day or two. We'll we'll let him get comfortable and we'll catch him. Like our boy Freddie Pons told us about. Freddie Pons. Yeah. Great great episode. So, uh, so. Now we have uh, 
mm, possible. The first day was some civil unrest. After that, little pockets here and there, and a little thing. Our officers uh, went viral all over the nation, all over the news, taking care of business, handling business. How'd you feel about seeing our officers on the, the worldwide stage handling business in a professional manner? How'd you feel about that? Man, I was incredibly proud. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, I got phone calls from all over the country, and I did interviews from all over the country because we became a model of, hey, how is it that you have managed where – you know, you, you had the start like like everywhere else, but somehow it's gone nowhere. And every time they've tried to start something, it goes nowhere. How have you guys been able to to manage? How how have you been able to do that? Can I interject? Sure. Because some people might not understand which what situation I'm talking about. There was an incident on the on our on a Biscayne Boulevard, a very uh yeah, a I wasn't large, sure if that's the one you were yeah, describing. Yeah, on Biscayne yeah. Boulevard. Well, one of our officers were actually struck in the head with a skateboard. skateboard yeah. Um, and now if you're like, oh, okay, I remember that incident. I'm sure everyone's seen it was listening to this. But uh, we, we responded with force, but reasonable force, meeting what, what was the situation, what it deemed. So uh, I just remember you speaking on that. I just want to just recapture that. You know, what, what you well, think. let me, because I know I asked you this question as an outsider. Um, those, the officers and the way that they were dressed and the way that they, how they were moving and stuff, who were they and what were they? Was that a, uh, you know, civil unrest, you know, a field force, an organiza organized group, or how were, who were they? So we had both. We, we've had what we call uh, RPs, response platoons, uh, a group of officers that work together that we're going to be able to deploy quickly. Uh, then we have our uh, bicycle officers, our uh, uh, bicycle response team. Those guys look amazing. Those guys. The bike guy. Those, those guys are phenomenal. Very exciting. And they, they have that combination of they're on a bike, so they're a little bit less visibly threatening. Mm -hmm. However, they can do everything from deploy agents to handle an unruly mob. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they go through a lot of training. We have all of it. And then when we need to flex it, we flex it. And if we don't, we don't. So, and that was part of the thinking too, hey, let's not set up a skirmish line. You set up a skirmish line, it's almost like, okay, this is now when we start, you throw stuff at us, and yeah. then we go towards yeah. you. It's if like we can, heart. Yeah, if yeah. we can monitor and, and keep an eye out, and then be a block or two away, and by the way, these are some of the comments that we heard protesters make, man, they're not here, but they're here mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. I mean, we literally heard them say that, which was pretty cool. Um, you know, that was all part of the strategy. I was very proud of the officers that they're restrained until it's time to take appropriate action. And then they take the appropriate action and they're telling you and they're telling you very serious. Hey, man, don't do that or you're going to have a problem. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some people have complained. Um, I had to do a video, if, if you remember, Nick, where some protesters said that we were targeting the oh, yes. organizers. So we, I, I had to clear the record there because it's information wars. Yeah. Uh, we had someone, the, one of the local stations did a report. They interviewed a girl that said, I was on the sidewalk, I did nothing wrong, and the Miami Police Department is now targeting organizers. At first, I didn't pay attention to it, but I saw some local activists retweeted that, the story. Then I saw Benjamin Crump retweet it, that we need to go down to Miami because this is an outrage what they're doing. Yeah. And so we kind of had to clear the record, show the videos, show that she knew exactly why she was being arrested, what she did, and then basically tell the public, hey, don't get sucked in by these people that want to harm our community. Don't yep. be manipulated by them. The, you know, that's what they're trying to do. You know, we're, we're doing the right thing here. Please trust us. And they well, have. And yeah. communicating with the organizers is part of what allows the organization to get their message out and do it safely. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, and, and so why would we necessarily go after organizers when those are the ones that we want to it's important to have an open create, line of communication yeah the dialogue with that would obviously shut down if you were going after them uh arbitrarily or for no reason uh just because they were they took the the opportunity to become a figurehead of of a group or organization and and um going back i'm going to go back to about the the Cayocho, we pull a permit or whatever um, you know, is if you assemble without a permit, it's against the law, right? You can't, you have to get a permit, city permit. So, and, and I know we make some exceptions and we kind of weigh, is the juice worth the squeeze on some things? Um, but if you're going to go out and, you know, disrupt businesses and disrupt traffic on the highway, and because people are like, well, we're just protesting. Why, why are we being arrested? There's a way to do it. You know, you go, if you... By all means, go get a permit and go do what you have to do. And 
even so, I, and we flex a little bit when it comes to something uh, as far as protesting and being able to work with the community like that, if it's reasonable. So that was just something that, that I wanted to clarify a little bit is like, hey, we're cool with it. Just, you know, play by the rules. When you push a little bit, we got to nudge you back into the thing. And that's why I thought it was, it, it gets a little, it gets a little, as an officer, it gets a little exhausting, right? And, and But again, as a chief, you have to balance. Is the juice worth the squeeze? Because you're out there day in and day out, day in and day out, and now the group's 100, 100 um, protesters and people um, walking. But this is our 30th day or something, you know? But we're out here, and we're here. We're here for you. Whatever you need, we're here to listen to you. And we're also here to guide you. You need to stay in the thing. So I thought that was cool. Uh, you know, you got to give everyone, some officers might understand, this, as a chief, you have to play the you have to play the balance. Look. Yeah, and it's a matter you know if it's organic, Nick. Yeah. If, if something's happened, right? Anywhere it doesn't matter whether yeah. it's Minneapolis or, or Manchester. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If it's organic and people come out and and they want to express themselves, and it's a large group of people and it's spilled out into the street, man, I I understand that. And so we're going to handle that a little bit different than this is day twenty seven. Yeah. There's plenty of space on the sidewalk. Yeah. Right, because if you have space on the sidewalk and you can be seen and heard, and you want to come out and protest, no matter what it is, that's cool because yeah. you know that's what makes this country great. But I find it irresponsible. You know, you want to go out and obstruct traffic. Why? Yeah. Why? And and by the way, if you want to do that because it's it's you, you want to show civil disobedience, man, that's okay too. But part of that process is you get arrested. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you want to make a political statement, hey, you know what, I'm going to break the law and I'm going to stand in the middle of the street, even though there's space on the sidewalk, because I want to make a political statement. That's OK. But you go to jail for that. That's part of your political statement. I this was so important. I got arrested. Yep. We will accommodate you. Yeah. You can just tell us, by the way, hey, man, I'm going to go out in the street and that that way we'll understand what you're doing and then we'll arrest you and nobody got hurt. Yeah. But you, you can't go out and obstruct traffic when there's space to protest somewhere else where you can be seen and heard yeah. and then you're affecting other people's ability to get to work, to get to the doctor, to go worship, whatever it is, you know, we all kind of have to fit in the same space, you know? So that, and then that's what I was trying to get at. Like, well, at what point where you're like, okay, okay, you know, and not to say enough is enough because we let them do their thing, but now you're going to work within my uh, the parameters that you're supposed to. At what point did you see that, and at what point did it turn that you were like, now is the time where we got to, all right, guys, this is our troops. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to relate to them, and now this is going to, moving forward, these are the, the rules. The time was when it was really no longer an organic thing. Yeah. These are planned protests where they're recruiting people through social media and they're saying hey let's pick up sticks and stones and let's bring uh, material to help um, if we get gassed for example okay man that's different than hey man I, I have a message about social justice or reform no no you're talking about wanting to go out and damage property yeah. okay well see that that's not the same anymore one thing is to protest and another thing is to com uh, commit a criminal act yeah now become a criminal, now you're yeah. talking about wanting to break the law so now you're going to follow the law or we're going to arrest you um it's really important that the public understands and, I, and again you want to give you want to give some time for the organic part that way when you come out and you tell the public hey i want everybody to understand this is what's happening. We're not going to allow this for these reasons. And so you should know we're going to be taking this action. That way nobody's surprised about it. The big thing for me, Nick, was, you know, we, we had about, I don't know, 14, 15 officers that were COVID positive at the time. And that shot up to almost 70. Yeah. Um, people thought I was making a political statement. I had a press conference and I said, you know, we've had these protests and now I have all these sick officers. And people thought that what I was saying was that the protesters made us sick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not what I was saying. I'm saying now I have all these sick officers. And the reason is I have to put four guys to a car. Yep. When we're in field force, you know, response platoon formation, they're in a car 10, 12, 14 hours a day. They're in close contact with each other. For all I know, I have some officers making protesters ill. But the bottom line is we have a health uh, crisis. 
So you, you can't have it both ways. Yeah. You can't say, hey, mask up, socially distance, but hey, we want to go out and protest, so now it's cool. No, it's not cool. Yeah. It's not. And so that was right around that time when my officers were getting sick that I thought, man, that, that, that's it. And, and, that, and being out there as one of the officers out there, and luckily, think, knock on wood, I didn't, on Cedarwood, uh, that I didn't get sick was uh, uh, I always had it in the back of my mind, man, we got to put our gas mask on because there might be some chemical agents. We got to take it off. We got to put it on. And there's times where you're just like, on, off, go, crowd, on, go, off, take it off. So you're, you're exposed. There's no way around you're it. You're exposed. Yeah, and that's you're exposed. reality of the beast. Uh, across the nation, some areas, the chiefs have resigned. Um, and that's, it, you think some of it is having some political support behind you. Like you're talking to the mayor and like, this is, this is what I got. This is, these are my guys. And they're like, good, go for it. What do you, you think that helped out? Like looking, looking across the nation, some chiefs and large agencies that are having some issues, they step down and said, I can't do it. I don't have the backing. You know, do you think that's a I big, think it's a huge factor. Yeah. Listen, you know, not just being chief, being a police officer, you, you know the, the sacrifices that you make. You know that you miss the birthday party or a holiday or, or your spouse's uh, special day, whatever it could be, something at work, a promotion, a graduation because you're at work and so you know the sacrifices that you make that the general public they say oh we're grateful they really they don't live it so yeah. they really don't know man if you don't have somebody telling you man i'm grateful to you it becomes harder and harder to do that job it's just the reality of it well it's the same as a chief this is a 24 7 gig Every day, I'm, I'm worried about what's happening in the city. I feel like I am responsible for the safety of everyone in the city of Miami all the time. Right. The buck stops here. And, and I, I feel that. I feel that weight. If you don't have your electeds, your manager, your mayor, whoever it is, saying, hey, man, I appreciate what you're putting in, I, I can see where someone would say, wait, wait a minute, I, I, don't, I don't sleep at night and I work all day. And on top of that, you're going to give me a hard time about everything. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not surprised. And what, what really stinks is, man, we've had some really good chiefs across the country step down because they didn't get the support that they should have gotten from either the electeds, the public, or both. And that's too bad because we've lost some really good ones across the country. Mm. And, that, and that's without a doubt. That's what you like, no thought in your mind. Not that they couldn't handle what the situation that was going on. It says they didn't have the support. They don't have the support. Yeah. They don't have the support, and it makes it difficult to fix in your mind. How do I keep making these sacrifices at home when people you know, that I work for aren't giving me the support that I need to be able to do my job or you know, cut your budget or whatever the case is, handcuff you? you know, somebody's tearing up your city, and they're telling you don't do anything about it. You know, I, I, I wouldn't be able to handle that. Yeah, I, I, I could imagine. Being a, being a cop's cop, you know, I think you're, you're, you know police work. You've done a, uh, an array of units. So to somebody say, no, 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 we're not going to do that, you're, I think you're, um, you know, law enforcement, you see that first before politician. You're like, it might not look good, but I'm not looking to get elected here. I need to, I need to do what I have to do as a law enforcement No officer. doubt. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's pretty good. I want to ask... Um, you know what? Let's go. I was gonna. I was gonna end it, but I got one more thing. Sure. It happened. Things happened, right? Yeah. Moving forward. What's uh, What's the plan for Miami Police now? Recently, um, and you can talk uh, expand on this a little more. But recently, we had, um, you know, the sports are feeling the effect of of everything that's going on, and politics and things are are flowing into sports, and the NBA uh, is is one of them, obviously. So. Our Heat, Miami Heat organization, uh, decided to collaborate. I guess we have a good working relationship we, with all, anybody who plays in our city. We're always yeah. you know, good with the Marlins, good with the Heat. Um, they reached out, uh, and I believe there was a little, um, what's it called, when you disagreed with something, and they might have misspoken a little bit, and you called them out on it, and they acknowledged, and then, then you guys moved forward. Um, and we came up with this program. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a seminar, essentially. It was a retired FBI who had gone through some stuff and somebody else, I think, from Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. They spoke really, uh, really well. But 
here's here's the overall message, and this is it, and this is why it's good to hear the incomplete message. Okay, but here's the overall message from the officers. When you get, it's like it's like high school when you hear a rumor or something in the telephone, and you hear a little bit, and it and it turns into something, and then when you realize that's not nothing what it was like, but the heat are going to tell us how to be police officers. Can you believe that? That it went from what it was to to now the foot soldiers are like, can you believe the Miami Heat are going to tell us how to be police officers? And I'm like, what? No, nah, that's not how it is. Yes, we have to We have to go to a training. For a fact. Yeah. It's, yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's true. Like, I'm like, nah. And I, and I don't believe it. Like, something that outlandish is like, there's got to be more to it. Let's let's figure out what's going on. And then, um, you know, you get there, you sit in the seat, and you're you're you have to go to this training, and you're like, I wonder what this is going to be about. Are they really going to tell me? And then the chief came in, and he gave a great, uh, you know, to the troops. You know, guys, uh, I understand what you're about to hear. We're doing a lot of it, if not all of it, and more. You guys are doing an outstanding job. Um, you know, the Heat reached out, and they wanted to work together with us. And uh, they misspoke about you a little bit, but I, I, you know, challenged them, and they acknowledged they were wrong. And you guys are doing good. Just add this to your tool belt, essentially what was the overall message. Add this to your tool belt, take it in with an open mind, and uh, uh, continue doing the outstanding work that you did. So you went from here to, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I, was like, I thought that was a great, uh, you know, from a leadership to come in and maybe understand, like, and not be oblivious to maybe this might not be perceived from the troops. Maybe it might be perceived as the chief thinks we're we're doing something. I thought we were doing good here because we, everything that they said, we already have. That's right. Uh, so, so if you could expand a little bit. Yeah, so that's one of those, Nick, where I, I knew this is not going to be well received. Yeah. I mean, I just knew that because of the optics, right? So a lot of people in law enforcement have been offended by many of the sports teams that have been very, very outspoken on what they think is social reform uh, or what they think are um, you know injustices that have occurred and, and in some instances they're right and in others they're not but they've been very vocal about it and it's the generalizing that's been offensive right so some team comes out and says the police is bad well if you're a police officer you're not going to like that no so the Miami Heat put out a tweet that they like the other teams have been all about you know on, on the jerseys uh, different messages yeah, right. and, and some of that makes people uncomfortable and I get it and you're entitled to your opinion um, but they came out and they made statements about you know the police this and the police that and so you know I wanted to speak with them and, and we did speak and I got to tell them when you say that you're the Miami Heat that means you're talking about the Miami Police Department and if you feel a responsibility to use your platform to make a statement, you should feel equally responsible to educate yourself. Because this is what we've done in the city of Miami. I can't speak to Minneapolis or anywhere else. But you know, this, this thought that we're out there to kill people, that we want to find uh, you know, a, a brown-skinned person or a black-skinned person and murder them because we're law enforcement. Well, did you know that we've had one contact shooting this year? And the person wasn't uh, killed, but we've had one, and they shot at us first did you know that did you know that last year it was also one and these were the circumstances did you know and did you know and we've done and this and blah 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 and then you know to their credit they said man sorry you're right and we're, we're gonna have to be more responsible but the big thing for me nick it it almost didn't matter what they were going to come and speak about what was important for me was everyone is saying defund yeah. including a lot of sports teams and professional athletes. The fact that the Heat was willing to pony up and say, we're going to pay for training, that means they are funding us, not defunding, funding us. Man, I thought that that was an incredibly important message to say, listen, if we communicate here, you know, there's a way forward for all of us. You know, you, you feel like you need to do something, that's great, do something. You know, educate yourself and let's do it right. Do something. Yeah. And if you want to help me, well, I'm going to be open to that. And we're, this is important, at, you know, going forward. I knew it was going to, you know, ruffle some feathers at the moment. Yeah. But going forward, man, this is important that, that we can, you know, receive this this way. 
And, uh, and thankfully, it's really worked out. And, and their eyes have been open because they didn't know. Yeah. They didn't know the things that we're doing in the community. And so it was really important to be able to get them in. And by the way, to bring some of those you know, heat uh, personnel in and say, by the way, these are the people you're talking about. Now yeah. you get to meet them. You get to look at them in the eyes. You, you tell them that they don't come out here and risk their ass every day. You, you try to tell them that. Here they are. They're sitting right here. You tell them that you think that they're not doing a good job. I, it was, it was uh, I'm telling you, it was good to mix the crowd like that because there yeah. was law enforcement, there was civilians, there was people that, uh, I think we had some professors from University of Miami, there was heat personnel there, there was just uh, people from uh, different communities and, and different organizations there, and they had, like you said, the perception of this, perception of that, and oh, by the way, the guy you're sitting next to, that's the guy that you're talking about, or the girl that you're sitting next to, and everyone had a chance to speak on. And at one point, they said, what do you think the problem is? Uh, wh what do you think is a pressing issue? Uh, give us a, a pressing issue. And they just left it general like that. But I want to say 99.9%, .9%, if not 100% of everyone, spoke something about law enforcement and the way things are. And I think mine was just a, I think it was just a lack of communication uh, between uh, law enforcement and, the, and society, just like people that don't understand. So if you don't understand something, then you're going to come to a, a conclusion that might not be right, you know, but no one else is saying anything about it. So I, and I think us as an agency, and I don't want to say anything about our social media and everything and the way that we communicate through PIO and the way we have that uh, community outreach and everything. But what they were saying, we already do. And if right. not, we do really, really good. I think we're the leading, one, if not the leading uh, agency, sorry. <laughs> size, size wise, <laughs> in a large agency, uh, uh, in in that field, you know, and I think that's also something that that also can go back with everything else in that recipe of why the why is the community so what, what was so good about that? I think the communication, the stuff we already have, uh, defund the police. Everybody should have body cameras. We have body cameras, right? Uh, everyone, we should do community work and community. You should be out there with the community. We are. We are. We are. We have all these programs. Because yeah. that, that, that goes back to, you know, some of the difficulties of 2020 is uh, just some of this stuff people who haven't done their research on, people who haven't looked into. Because the, the big part is, yeah, I mean, you've got this whole wide world that you've got to look at. But one of the most important things to me is, is looking at your community, you know, what's around you, you know, your city you live in, your city you work in and stuff. And you know, you, you take in effect from some of the other stuff outside, but what do you have here and what can you do to make it better here? Because you can't change the world all the time. You've got to work inside, yeah. and, you know, and, and you got to uh, look at inside. And if and they get wrapped up in those messages and the heat m misspoke at the time. And man, and, and listen, and, it goes back to the communication thing, mm -hmm. yeah. because, you know, the, the question that that Audrey, Michael Myers, asked. Yeah about the community. Yeah. You know, this is another, again, even if the officers themselves don't realize it at the moment, this is something that the community sees and thinks, hey, you know what, our, our police department is open. Yeah. Our de police department wants to have a conversation. Our police department wants to grow. Well, you know, that keeps that support on our side. We're not going to succeed in a silo. If we want to have real success, we need the public support. I mean, that, that is really simple and it's very evident. No one picks up the, the phone and says, hey, there's something happening over there. That means we can't respond. We can't catch the bad guy. Yeah. I mean, we need their support. Yes. Well, this is another example of, hey, man, we're, we're open. We, we get it. We, we want to be team players. And then hopefully they think the same and ultimately you have better success. I think it's shown. I think um, our community... And you can see it um, on these, because I'm, again, I'm social media, so I'm on there looking at things, and these, these large platforms, hundreds of thousands of people, and they're locally based, uh, you know, only in day lifestyle Miami. You can see it in the comment section when something comes up. You might get one negative comment, but those locals are all, it's, it's bubbling up. At first, nobody wanted to speak because they felt like they were taken aside, and then it was well defined as, we agree with that. Uh, with that message, however, we don't agree with what's going on out there, and we support our police. Mm -hmm. And uh, and to me, to watch that in the comment section, because I'm scrolling through, I'm like that. That speaks volumes of of our agency. You know? yeah. yeah, and it inspires you to want to come back to work and yes. do a good job, which yes. is the you know that that's the whole one thing feeds the other, man. Yeah. I mean, when you hear that, you're thinking, okay, I, I feel the love, and I'm going to come out and continue to do. Yeah, and and running into some locals you know and they're saying hey officer we're not with that we appreciate you uh you know uh we appreciate you coming through 
some of the urban communities. We appreciate you coming through. All, yeah, all the neighborhoods. Yeah. It's not just you, know, you go to one specific type of neighborhood. All of them. You go to all, all of, of them. them. And you hear it in all of them, and it's like, thank you. Walking right. into, yeah, it walking a into a, a store or something, hey, thank you, sir. Thank you. We appreciate it. Don't, don't worry about all that stuff. Thank you. And it's and it's like, oh, the community's, community's got our back, and that's cool. The <laughs> thing that's a bummer is you're wearing the mask, and they can't see you smile. And yeah. it's a little more yeah. difficult yeah. to... to, to to give them back that smile and that, and let them see, because that's me. I, I like to show my appreciation right here. Yeah. You know, so I try to do it now more with my eyes. And uh, I think everyone's and, got that little. Yeah, you got to give. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. See my eyebrows? That's very important. You know. So. All right. So, big news. Chief is 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 ready to hang it up at least in this aspect of the career. I think you've done a phenomenal job. You're here Thank on you, the man. show. Um, a rumor was that you kicked me out of the social media unit. <laughs> really? Was that a rumor? Yeah. Why did he kick him out? Like, no. And then I, had, I had I had clarified. Like, that's yeah. not. That's how it happened. We have a good relationship. It's like, oh, the, you know, if you don't say anything, then it all the speculations, sure, of course. all that stuff. You know, but whatever. So moving forward, Chief is is. Uh, I don't want to say calling it quits because that's not what it is. It is you're retiring, hanging it up. What do you got? What do you got going on? What's going on? We starting our uh, run for 2024 presidential run, or what are we doing? No, I'm Gov- just Governor? I, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, it's a lot of people have asked me yeah. about, you know, politics. Hey, are you going to get into politics? I've had, honestly, a lot of people that have encouraged me to, yeah. you know, run for something. Yeah. Um, I, I don't see that happening. Um, I'm not crazy about politics. Um, I, I don't like a lot of the stuff that I see, and, and I don't know how I would do there. You know, um, the only thing that I would consider, just to be honest, because I, I know that my feelings could could change is, you know, maybe the sheriff's thing. You know, hey. I, yeah, I'd have to think about it. You know, I'm not going to dismiss it entirely. Yeah. So we, we have an election in Miami-Dade County yeah. in 2024, I think. Ooh. They could move it up to 2023. I, I don't know uh, for sheriff in Miami-Dade County. That'd be big. So I, I would certainly consider that. That aside, I'll do a little consulting. You know, maybe I'll do more of these podcasts. Hey, maybe you start your own <laughs> podcast. That's what I'm talking about. Can I be a guest? Can I be? Oh, can we be a guest? Can we be a guest? <laughs> so, you know, maybe something like that. I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm open to to all of it. I, I will definitely help out. I know the Department of Justice. Uh, is interested in, in having me help him with a few things yeah. in some different agencies and that kind of stuff. So I'll do a little bit of that, and then we'll see. Some people have been sliding in. Uh, it's called the DM. I'm sure you know what the DM is. People have been sliding in. Hey, you know, what, you ever consider this? Would you? I'm sure. I'm sure you got the offers. I'm sure, like a what's a like a, a scouting report with a talented athlete. You know, they're about to make. Man, it's been flattering. Yeah. I, I have had, uh, you know feelers for sure yeah. people have reached out um and and that has been very flattering but this is probably one of the few times in my life nick where and it's caused me a little bit of anxiety that man i i just don't know yeah i i feel like i accomplished what i wanted to accomplish here so i'm confident that it's time for me now to go yeah. do something else the something else is the little bit of the unknown so that's what that's so there is something coming so stay tuned stay right? tuned stay, stay you're tuned. gonna you'll hear it here first that's right stay oh, tuned it. Hey, that's it. That's it. We gotta, no, write it down write it down <laughs> sign this right here <laughs> so so there is something coming so that's what i'm saying you're not gonna go it's time to go kick no it on the beach. yeah Maybe no a month or a so. little bit yeah. i'll do a little bit of that but no i i like to think and i like to to problem solve and so nice. i, I want to keep my my brain you know yeah, busy. Yeah, you're still young yeah, yeah so young. without a doubt any uh, any prospects to uh, fill in the big shoes? Man, I I have absolutely no idea yeah. who the next chief will be. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, you know, you, you, you kind of know. Yeah. But that's not the case here. I don't think that they know. Um, it, it's I, I think they're struggling a little bit with, you know, who who they may want. We. You know, we've had a lot of success, Nick, fortunately, in the police department. Right. And, and that's this is not a, a one man show. Nope. You know, there's a lot of people that do a lot of good work. And so, you know, my feeling is that it should absolutely be somebody internally because we have very talented people that have worked very hard for a long time and, and deserve a shot. And so I'm hoping it's one of them. And it's certainly what I'll continue to push for, man. Pick pick somebody from inside because they've really done a great job. That's right. You heard it here. You heard it here. So that figure it out. Uh, you know, right. That's how we're getting to so figure it out. 
Uh, no, you can't run for chief or, or try to apply for chief. I was gonna, I was gonna throw my name in the hat. <laughs> when no. is the opening in the official bulletin? I'll put, it's gonna be <laughs> tough to do this podcast if you're chief. So, uh, Jay, you got anything for no. chief before? No, it's we... been, it's been a pleasure. It's uh, thank you. Nice to meet another chief. I told you I get to work with my chief a lot, and it's nice to talk to another chief and hear a different perspective too. How about to come kick it on the podcast? Oh, and, and yeah, thank you. Of course, hanging out on the podcast. hanging out. That was pretty cool. And, and you know what? I shot. It's like, shoot your shot. You know, that's what they say nowadays. Shoot, you see that girl, and you want to ask her out? Shoot your shot. So I was like, I would love to get the chief on. I'm going to shoot my shot. You know, we have a good relationship. Let's see. It. And Why not? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Well, if you think about everything we just talked about, you're at the helm of the, you know, you got COVID to deal with and all this stuff to deal with. Let me take some time out of my schedule on, on my day off, if you even have one of those. And stop by on a football day. So they didn't uh, even, football day. And even stop I by. heard this. I heard there was the best coffee here. So that was really my motivation. There, there you go. <laughs> the coffee here was better than than any other place in town. That's yeah. it. Did we let you down? Man, it was actually really good. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Sir, uh, salute. Cheers. Thank you for coming on. My pleasure. Anytime. Much appreciated. Absolutely. Calling all units. Calling all units. Donut Shot has a fresh dozen. Go ahead and take a 1040.